Hi everyone, today we have a winner strategy using VWAP, Bollinger Bands and the RSI for confirmation. I backtested this before sharing it in this video. It's the first scalping strategy that we are showing on this channel because usually scalping is very challenging for algorithms since the data is usually noisy on lower time frames. If you are new to this channel, the Python code is downloadable from the link in the description and don't forget to support and subscribe, maybe drop a comment if you have any ideas to be shared. The total return after three years of backtesting is around 300% and the reason I liked this strategy is the average trade duration which is around 51 minutes here so you can see this on this line so this is the fastest trade closing strategy on this channel so far and this means less overnight fees and less stress because you can immediately see the results of your executed trades and someone from the comment section asked for the sharp ratio and it's included also in this strategy it's around 1.65 this value can change with any parameters modifications in our python code so when you download the Python code and you execute it, you check the backtesting, this sharp ratio might be changing. Just keep an eye on this so you can maximize this value. For this strategy, I'm using the five minutes time frame, the VWAP curve. I'm looking for 15 candles, for example, to be above or below the uh, VWAP curve, which is the blue line we can see here. And it's mainly used for trend detection. So if we have 15 candles above the VWAP curve, we are in an uptrend. If we are below the VWAP curve, I'm looking for selling positions because I consider we have downtrend. Then to take the entry positions for the trading, we have Bollinger Bands. I'm using the length 14 with a standard deviation of two. So if we are in an uptrend above the VWAP curve, we are looking for buying positions and whenever I have a candle closing below the lower Bollinger curve, this is where I have my entry signal for a buying position. If we are looking for a downtrend, so we are below the VWAP curve and we're looking for a selling position or a short position, I'm waiting for a candle to close above the upper Bollinger band and this will be my selling signal. Finally, to confirm the signal, I'm using the RSI. If I have an RSI below 45, then I confirm a buy signal. If I have an RSI above 55, I'm confirming a short position or a selling signal. For the take profit and the stop loss, I'm using the ATR, the average true range, looking back, for example, for the last seven candles, taking the ATR value for these seven or eight candles. I'm multiplying this by a certain coefficient, and this will be my stop loss distance. The take profit is equal to the stop loss distance times the take profit stop loss ratio, also known as the risk reward ratio. So as you may have noticed, there's a lot of parameters to be tuned, the length of the ATR, the coefficient, the ratio, the take profit stop loss ratio, among other parameters, such as the indicators parameters, the RSI length. So all of these are parameters that we can be modifying in the Python code and checking how they could affect our strategy over the three years data. So again, you can download the code from the link in the description and you can experiment on your own to see how these parameters can affect your trading strategy. Okay, now we can write all of this in Python, modify the parameters and see how our backtesting is affected. This is our Jupyter Notebook file. We are importing pandas as PD and I'm loading my data frame, loading my data. It's a CSV file, the Euro US dollar candlesticks, five minutes asking price between 2019 and 2022. So this is three years worth of data. Then we need to do a bit of reformatting for the time, the GMT time column, which is loaded with the data. So this is the data frame before our cleaning. The GMT time column contains the date, but then the time as well. And then we have 0 0.000, which are the fractions of the second. So we don't need this for the moment. And we can clean this to make a simpler format of the date. So I'm removing the 0 0.000 at this line using this line. I'm adjusting the format of the time using this particular line here. And then I'm setting the date as index. So I will no longer have the um, integer index here. I will have this GMT time corrected as an index. Also, I'm discarding the uh, rows where the high value of the candle is equal to the low value, which means that we didn't have any movements 
of the price or of the market at these particular moments. These can happen on weekends, they can happen on days off or any other moments where the market was off or we simply lost the contact with our data servers. So now I have my data frame is cleaned. The length of my data is 200,000, 24,989. So this is how many rows I have in my data frame. Then I'm adding the technical indicators. So at this point, we are adding a column called VWAP, which contains the VWAP. I'm providing the high, low, close, and the volume of these rows. And the VWAP is computed automatically using this particular library. I'm adding the RSI because I'm going to use it. I'm using length 16 here. You might want to change this. This is one of the parameters you can experiment on. And the Bollinger Bands, I'm using length 14 and standard deviation 2.0. There is no particular reason for these values. This is trial and error. You might want to change these and experiment on your own. The results that I'm going to show you are definitely not the best results for this strategy. You can definitely improve these by trying or adding probably other technical indicators if you wish so. Then we need to compute the VWAP signal, something I call the VWAP signal. And this is uh, computing the number of candles that are above, completely above or completely below the VWAP curve. For example, if we have 15 back candles above the VWAP curve, I will consider I have an uptrend and my um, VWAP signal will be equal to 2. And in the opposite case, if I have 15 back candles that are below the VWAP curve, so I consider that I'm in a downtrend, and this will be my VWAP signal. So anyway, this VWAP signal is stored as a new column in my data frame that I'm calling DF VWAP signal. Then we can compute the total signal, and this is done inside of this function I'm calling total signal. So the conditions are the following. If I have a VWAP signal that is equal to 2, meaning I'm looking for an uptrend, or buying or long positions. And at the same time, I have a candle that closes below the lower Bollinger Band curve. And at the same time, the RSI is below 45. In this case, I have a buying signal. The function is going to return to. If in the opposite case, I have a VWAP signal equal to one, I'm looking to short the market. At the same time, I have to have a closing candle above the upper Bollinger Band and the current candle's RSI is above 55. Then I'm going to return one, which means I have a short signal. If none of these conditions is true, then I'm going to return zero, which means I don't have a particular signal for the current candle I'm looking at. And so we can compute the total signal and store it as a new column in our data frame. We're going to call it DF total signal. Just to make sure that my conditions are working properly, I'm going to count the number of total signals we got in our data frame and we have 2,781. So theoretically, we should be having around 2,781 trades in our backtesting. So if you have been watching this channel, you know that we always try to visualize our signals, which makes things easier. I'm going to create points above or below the candles whenever I have selling or buying uh, signals. And I'm going to store these positions of the points in a new column in the data frame called point position break, for example. And this cell here will be plotting the candles. It's to visualize the candles. So I'm providing the open, high, low and close prices. And I'm providing as well the VWAP line. We can also provide the uh, Bollinger Bands. We also need to add the signals, meaning the points that we just computed where we had the total signal valid. And these are the signals. As we can see here, we have um, a buying signal or a long signal at this point, this purple point, which is below the candle. And that's because we had 15 candles above the VWAP curve, the blue curve. And at the same time, we have this candle, this red candle closing below the lower Bollinger Band curve. So this is true according to the conditions. We also have the probably the RSI above the uh, 55, for example. So and we have this buying position, this long trigger here as a signal. It was a false signal because afterwards we can see that the price dropped down. But this one here is a good signal because we have 15 candles above the view up curve. So we are looking for a buying position. And one of these candles closed below the lower Bollinger Band 
band curve so we can see that we are good to go as a buying position so anyway what i can say at this point is that the algorithm is working as intended so this these are the conditions that we provided and it's working well but we are missing on some of these nicer uh, trades as well so we could have been detecting something like this and the reason we don't have a signal here is that because these two candles or this particular candle the red one it's true it closed below the uh, lower Bollinger Band curve but at the same time it crossed the VWAP curve and one of the conditions of our algorithm is not valid anymore so we needed the last 15 candles including the current candle to be above the VWAP curve so we are confirming an uptrend so maybe this is one of the conditions we can maybe improve a bit something that i might work on for the next videos if you are interested in improving this particular strategy please drop a comment it's really of a big support when i see you sharing ideas i always get most of my ideas out from the comment section so now we can move on to the back testing part for this we are going to need the atr the average true range to choose our stop loss and take profit values and this is where I'm computing the uh, ATR. I'm adding it to my new uh, data frame that I'm using. This is simply a copy of a slice of my initial data frame. Just sometimes the, um, the whole data frame is kind of large, so I don't want to wait and test on all the data. It takes some time. It's easier to take a small slice, do your experiment, change your values and then when you are happy with these uh, parameters you can run on the whole set of data then i'm using the backtesting.py library package for my backtesting and here i'm going to use the stop loss atr distance it's equal to 1.2 times the current atr value so this is the coefficient i was talking about when i presented the strategy and the take profit stop loss ratio is set to 1.5 in this particular example. I'm adding also a condition. It doesn't make much of a difference in this case for this particular strategy here with these parameters. It's that if we have a long position, if the current trade is long and the RSI is crossing the value of 90, I'm closing the, uh, the trade even though I didn't reach the take profit value yet. The same thing in the opposite uh, direction if I have a short position and we are going below the RSI is going below 10 I will close the position even though I haven't reached my take profit value yet if I have a buying signal and we are allowing only one trade at a time so if the length of the current trades is equal to zero computing the stop loss as we have explained I'm computing the take profit using the take profit stop loss ratio and I'm opening a buy position the opposite case works similarly so when we have a signal equal one a total signal that is one so it's a selling position we don't have any open trades i compute the stop loss the take profit and i open a selling position and if i start with 100 dollars as cash and i use a margin of 1 over 10 we can run a back test and we can check the results i'm getting 197 percent in return and an equity peak of 300 dollars 313 dollars but the equity final is around $300 as well. It's $297. Remember that we started with $100. And the sharp ratio is 1.65, as we have mentioned at the beginning. The reason I like this strategy is this particular average trade duration value here. It's 51 minutes. So most of our trades are going to be closed within an hour. So you don't have to wait much. The win rate is not very high. It's 45%. But remember that we're using a take profit stop loss ratio of 1.5 and if we look at the equity we can see that we have a constantly increasing uh, capital we have a small drawdown period right here but overall the equity for scalping is really good it might be also interesting to check parts of the history for example if i go for the first year i'm going to cut my data for the first 75,000 rows we have a sharp ratio of 2.12 and we have a return of 53 percent per year so it's an annual return average annual return of 53 percent a total return of, of 72 percent and an average trade duration of 47 minutes okay so this was it for this video please let me know if you want me to expand on the strategy and try to improve it adding more custom indicators and so on i would like to investigate the vwap more so stay tuned for our next video until our next one trade safe and see you next time